Shalom to the whole house of Yasharal and to the strangers and foreigners who were found within our gates. I would just like to say um, that the law of Yahuwah isn't done away with according to Matthew, uh, chapter 5, verses 17 through 20. And there's only one law for bloodline Yasharal according to Shamuth, Exodus, chapter 12, verse 49, Uyakra, and the mighty bar chapter 15 verse 29 on this uh, on this beautiful Friday there's a nice 61 degrees outside so if you're outside enjoying this weather um, I bid thee peace uh, shalom that you are safe and your children are safe um, just for a moment I wanted to speak about how important it is for us to choose our words carefully um, I've come to the conclusion and, and understanding that words can inspire or words can destroy. And it's what we say unto each other that either casts us into a conflict, an altercation, where we hurt each other from a physical standpoint or emotional standpoint. So when we are on this walk, on this journey of, of to be spiritually united, um, the one thing that comes to mind is First Corinthians chapter 13 and 11. When I was a child, I spoke as a child, I understood as a child, and I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. I think it is very childish that we, that some of us may exist just to cause harm with our words to other people, that we are so corrupt in our, in our rocks and our beings that all we know is misery, and we know the term is that misery loves company. There are just some people who are set in their ways who will not change, and they want company, so they'll do anything in their power to make you miserable as they are. I find that Yahuwah says in Mashal, your Proverbs, chapter 15, verses 2 to 4, the tongue of the wise use knowledge aright, but the mouth of a fool pour out foolishness. The eyes of Yahuwah are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. A wholesome tongue is a tongue of life, but perversiveness therein is a breach in the spirit of Yahuwah. So we find where Yahuwah is watching all of us good and evil, to give unto us based on the doing of our deeds. So, this is where we, we, we should want to be kind to one another, as it says in the Fasim Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 32. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even for Yahuwah, for Yahusha's sake, hath forgiven us. So, we can do these things and seek forgiveness from Yahuwah and give it to us. But it seems kind of uh, crazy that we don't want to give it to others or that we would even begin in such a way to cause that harm that we are seeking forgiveness of ourselves. So this is why it's important to choose your words carefully. You can, you can, you can inspire somebody, you can uplift them, or you can hurt them. You can, you can emotionally scar them. A person may not remember what you said, but down the line, they will remember how you made them feel. And it's the words you speak that either makes them feel good or makes them feel bad. Somebody can say that I remember what he said, I remember what she said, and if it wasn't for her words, I probably wouldn't have gotten through that last semester of school. I've seen it online where the words of individuals just come as a barrage of negativity, as hurt, harm. But I say unto you, keep your peace. Don't allow anyone to take the peace that Yahuwah has placed within you. Because when you do, a person will drag you down to their level and beat you with experience. Again, misery loves company. And when you allow someone 
to disrupt your peace with the words they say. Know that the evil one wins because he then changes you. He changed how you walk. He changed how you thought or how you think. He changed how you speak or how you spoke to someone. So at some point, we have got to put a stop to it. Hold on to your peace. If you can see uh, a malicious person coming from a mile away, like a pothole, avoid it. You keeping your peace. Stay humble. Remember empathy. To know what it feels like when you too were hurt by the words of someone else. Don't deliver those same words. As we look at Yahusha speaking in the Renewed Covenant in Matthew Matthew chapter 15 and 11, he says, Not that which goes into the mouth defiles a man, but that which comes out of the mouth, this defiles a man. So again, even Yahusha himself is telling us why it is important to choose our words carefully. Because he is saying that these words that come out of our mouth defiles our being. And then that casts us along with the evil that Yahuwah is watching. And deeds for the evil, well, as he says in scripture, the, the evil, the wicked, should not at all be acquitted. So this is why it's, 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 it's important to choose your words carefully. Again, if no one has told you, I want to tell you today that I love you. I have been on both ends of the spectrum where I have delivered malicious words and I have received malicious words. And it's really not fun. Having received them after I have given them, I know now that it is a disruption of my ruach, my spirit. How I want to be good, but I cannot be good if I'm doing that which is bad. So I choose wholeheartedly the will of Yahuwah, that I may be a, a, a blessing, that I may inspire, because I want to be inspired. And even if I hear the malicious words of another, I shall not allow them to affect me, to change me. So I say, keep your peace. Don't allow they who speak callousness to affect you in a way that changes you for the worse. Again, words can either disrupt, destroy, cause harm physically and emotionally, or you can use your words to inspire, to uplift, to encourage. I just want to say that I pray in the mighty name of Yahusha that Yahuwah shall grant favor blessings and esteem unto the readers, hearers, and doers of his word. Amen. Be kind to one another as it says in the fossil. Loving and tenderhearted to one another. For you never know who you're helping or who you're hurting, who you're casting down, or who you're uplifting.